Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Michael Jakes, Associate Pastor of Bethesda Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm so glad you could join us on this edition of the Upper Room Ministries broadcast. My prayer is that you'll be blessed and enlightened as you listen to the Word and to worship. It's God's intention, I believe, that you'll be mightily perceive him on the left hand where he doth work but I cannot behold him he hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him but he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me I shall come forth as gold my foot hath held his steps his way have I kept and not declined neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food you may be seated Amen. Amen. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for your word. We pray that as we read your word even now, Lord, that your people might be blessed and fed. Lord, bless us even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever felt alone? Amen. Have you ever felt that no one understood you? Have you ever wondered where God was? Even though you believe in Him. And even though you serve Him. And even though you love Him. Have you ever wondered where is He? Does he know what's happening to me? Does he know what I'm dealing with? Does he know what has happened to me? Have you ever wondered? Job was a man and you know his story. All the things that happened to him. He lost his family in one day. And then he got sick. There was something in this man that kept him 
straw. He said, "Fell in love with he fell in love with he fell in love with her." His body became weak. Man, they call him fat. There was something in him. They go mad at him. That would not let him let go of God. They keep him by the table for two. And we read his words here, starting in verse number eight. No, this is not verse number eight. He says, "If I go ahead, or if I go to the east." Si vous allez à à droite, à l'est, he says, I, I just don't see God. Bah ouais, bon Dieu. If I go behind me, si vous allez derrière moi, I still cannot sense His presence. Bah, sans si présence. If I go to my left, si vous allez à gauche moi, I still cannot see Him. It's like He's hiding from me. Et puis vous marquez le moment où il se coupe la tache. And finally, when I go to my right, I just cannot get a glimpse of him. And sometimes that's how it feels. No matter what direction you go, you're wondering where is God? Where is God? But what was in Job that caused him? To hold on to God no matter what. Because in spite of not being able to sense God's presence, in spite of not being able to see God at work, he still was able to say in verse number ten. But he. God knows the way I take. What you don't know. Because he knows the road I'm on. You can't even teach him how I am. He knows how I'm living. You can't even teach him how I live. He knows what's happening to me. You can't even say what's passing me. He knows what I'm dealing with. You can't even say what I'm I'm about to do. He still understood. He comprehends. Because he said, when God has finished with me, when He has tested me, when He is done with me, I'm going to come out like gold. In spite of it, we have to be brought to that place. In spite of not being able to see God, in spite of not being able to feel God, in spite of not being able to sense His presence, we still must. No, that he is there, and he sees everything. Sometimes the best thing that we can do, rather than pray for God to to take us out of a thing, rather, rather we should pray for God to take us through it. Because that's when we will see God do His mighty work. Feet, pied moins, or firm, pied moins firm. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. It says, let me turn to that very quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 15 and verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. That's it. You did that good. That's good. That's good. He says, steadfast. He says, firm. He says, unmovable and always abounding. Job says that my, my steps, he says that my steps are held tight. Firm. He wasn't going to move. Jesus is my Savior. We see this on Jesus is my Savior. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I will just remember. I will not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Job made up his mind that he was not going to be moved. Trouble come, come what may. He was not going to be moved. He lost his children. He lost his house. He almost lost his house. He lost his health. I shall not be moved. No matter what, I have no money. I have no job. Job made up his mind Amen. long before all this happened Amen. that he was going to hold his steps firm, Amen. steadfast. You can't move me. Situations can't move me. Circumstances can't move me. Problems can't move me. The devil can't move me. You can't move me. No one can move me. I will not be moved. Come what may. He says, my foot has held his steps. I'm not going anywhere. No matter the, the weather changes, I'm not moving. I'm staying right here. I'm staying. He says, number two, also in verse 11, he says, his way, his way, I have kept. His way, I have kept. Not my way. Sometimes the tempted to go our own way. Sometimes the tempted to have your will be done. Sometimes we're tempted, Lord, this is too hard, this is too much. Lord, let me try something. I think I can do it my way. You better not try it. Amen. You better not try my way. I just feel that my wife is not translated because I'm going too fast. Oh my God, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so, I, I can't help it. That's it. Go ahead. He says you must be committed. Committed. He was committed. He says, his way have I kept in, in Psalm 37 and verse number 4. Psalm 37 verse number 4. He says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. In verse 5 he says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. To commit means to roll on. Take that big old situation that you have. Take that problem that you can't get out of your mind. Take that situation that won't leave you alone. You take it because it's a burden. It's something that's weighing you down. You take it and you roll it on to the Lord. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave your burden on the altar. That's what must be done. So he says, his way I have kept in Psalm 42 and verse number one. Psalm 42 and verse number one. I'm so sorry, Edie. Psalm 42 and verse number one. He says, as the heart panted after the water brooks, so my soul panted after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? He says, my soul follows hard after thee. He says, I'm staying close to you. He says, I have not gone out of the way. I have not swerved. I have not moved. 
I'm following close to you. I'm walking in your footsteps, Lord. This is how I manage to keep my head above water. In verse number 12, he says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. He says, I have not strayed away. I don't know if you know how easy it is to stray away from God. It is very easy to take your eyes off of Jesus. With all the things that are going on all around you, with all the things that you have to deal with in your life. Yes. School and work and job and home and kids and family and husband and wife and everything that you have to deal with. It is very easy to take your eyes off of Jesus. Very easy. But what does he say? He says, I have not strayed. I have not allowed myself to drift away. I have not allowed myself to drift away. Once again, he's standing by what he said previously in the previous verses. I'm standing firm. I'm standing tall. I'm not allowing anything to move me. He's talking about here. He's talking about trust. In Psalm 26, in verse number 1, he says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. He wasn't going to go backward. He wasn't going to lose his steps because he trusted in God. He trusted in God. So his steps were going to once again remain firm. No matter what happened, no matter what happened, he was going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Finally, he says, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. More than my necessary food. He was willing to bank his life on the word of God. Until you are ready to surrender your whole self to the Bible, to the word of God and everything that he has said, that you're not ready for a hard time yet. Because you need to know what the word of God says. Because hard times are a guarantee. It's a guarantee. You're going to meet up with hard times. That's the way you grow. But he says that I have cherished. I have cherished. I have esteemed your words more than my food. He banked his life on it. In Psalm 119. Psalm 119, and in verse 11, it says very plainly, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. That word hid means treasure. Your word have I treasured in my heart. How much? How much do you treasure the word of God? I didn't say how much do you treasure the song. I didn't say how much you treasure, treasure praising God. How much do you treasure the word of God? You need to know the word of God because when the devil comes, it's the word of God that's going to make him run. It's the word of God that's going to make him walk away. It's the word of God, not your voice. Not even your song. Not all the time, even your praise. It is the word of God that's going to make the devil run. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You want to see the devil run? Two things you do. Yes, you praise because praise is going to confuse the devil. Because the devil is wondering, how come you're not crumbling? How come you're not falling? How come you're not dying with all these things that are happening in your life? How come you're still standing? You keep on praising God. You confuse him. You mess up his mind. And you want to do everything you can in your life that's going to mess up the devil. He's trying to mess you up, so you got to mess him up back. You got to do everything you can to get him. Because he's definitely trying to get you. So you must stand firm. You must stand firm. I love what it says in verse 14. He says, For he performs the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. God is going to do, and he's going to bring about his will in your life, no matter what. 
No matter what the devil says, no matter what anybody says, no matter what the situation says, God is going to bring about His good in your life when you trust Him. When you trust Him, He will bring it to pass. God will always stand tall for His children. But you must learn how to praise and you must learn how to use the weapon of the Word of God. You're going to have to stand on the Word. All four of these things that we talk about, His firmness, His commitment, His trust, His cherishing, His cherishing, will all based on the Word of God. He talks about it in verse number, verse number 9, uh, verse number 8 rather. Verse number 11, He says, His way, He says in verse number 8, I have not declined, I have kept His steps. Verse number 12, His lips, and his mouth, the word, it's all about the word of God. The word of God is the foundation. It needs to be the foundation of your life. When you know the word of God, you're able to come and stand up against the enemy no matter what. Do you realize, just want to know if you realize the authority that you have in Jesus. The authority that has been given to you by Jesus. The authority See, we don't live up to our we don't live up to our God-given capabilities. We allow the devil to pound on us, to lie to us, to tell us things that are not true. We allow him to do this to us when we have authority in us, within us, to stand up against the devil. Don't you know what it says in Luke chapter 10? In verse 19. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. I'm going to read that. I must read that in Creole for you to so you can hear it. I'm going to try. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Luke, leak. 10 and 19. Ouais, bon nous pouvoir pour nous marcher ces serpents à escorpion pour nous craser tout pouvoir Satan en bas pied nous pour un yet pont capable de faire nous mal. Amen. I have given you authority Amen. to trample on snakes and scorpions Amen. and over all the power of the enemy. I have given you authority. Here's the news flash. Me, you, we, us do not have power over the enemy. Oh, what are you talking about? No. Do not have power over the enemy. The enemy has more power than you. But it does not really matter because we have authority over him. Here is authority. Here is power. Power means strength. Okay? In myself, I do not have strength. I do not have power over the devil. I am mortal. I am human. <coughs> Satan is created. He has more power than I do. He is stronger than me by myself. However, example, a traffic cop stands in the middle of an intersection. A little lady, a little man, just a traffic cop standing in the middle of traffic. You see the traffic cop standing. Those cars have more power than that little person standing in that intersection. One of those cars can come and wipe that person out. But what does that little old traffic cop with the uniform does? He either blows a whistle or he says, and that big old car has to stop. Why? Because the traffic cop has authority. Authority. That is the authority that you have, that I have over the devil. Even though he has more power than me, because of the authority that has been given to me by Jesus, all I have to say is, devil, stop. In Jesus' name, stop. 
in Jesus' name. When I use the word of God, it gives me the authority to stand up against the enemy and the enemy has to flee. He has to flee. We must be able to take God's word and use it. The sword of the spirit. The Bible says that that's something that we have to do. We have to take up the shield of faith and the sword of the You have to take it up. You have to pick it up yourself. That's something that you have to do. Nobody's going to do that for you. have to open up your Bible and read it for yourself so you can know what Jesus is saying to you. You have to do it. And no one can make you do it. You see, we fight the biggest enemy that you and I have. The greatest enemy is not the devil. The devil is not your biggest enemy. Your biggest enemy is you. You are your greatest enemy because the, the devil uses your own selfish desires and your weaknesses against you. You should read the Bible. You don't feel like it. It's very simple. Why is the reason that we don't read the Bible? I don't feel like it. Why don't you read? I'm tired. Why don't you read? I have something else to do. Why don't you read? I don't have time. That's all on you. You. You are your worst. You are the only one that is causing you not to do the things that you need to do. The devil comes and he sees. Uh-huh. She doesn't like to do Okay, I see now. Okay, I see her thing. She doesn't like to do it. All right. And because, because we show the devil who we are, because we act in a certain way, he sees how we are, he is able, he is able to come out and figure out what we will do in a given situation. And we're wondering, does the devil read my mind? Does he know what I'm thinking? Absolutely not. The devil doesn't know what you're thinking. The devil doesn't know who you are. But only because he sees the things that you do. He sees your behavior. He sees what you say. He sees where you go. He sees everything about you. And so he, he has a profile on you. He knows the type of person that you are. That's all it is. But does he know what God knows? Absolutely not. God is sovereign. God is powerful. God knows everything. But we must be able to stand in the evil Day, and we must be firm and we must trust God and we must be committed and we must cherish the word of God in our heart. If not, the devil will make, the devil will chop you into little pieces and you will not know whether you're coming or going. And you will come to church and you will sit and you will listen and the devil will still be chopping you up into little pieces. And you'll be sitting here listening to someone preach and you'll be in little pieces. And you'll be all crumbled up inside because the devil is making a wreck of your life. Because, because you have not fully given yourself over to his word. You have not fully given yourself over to his power. And you don't realize the authority that you have in Jesus. I'm telling you, some things that you read in the Bible and you know it's there. And you get so familiar with it that you say, I know that already. That's a terrible thing. That's a terrible thing to say. That's a terrible thing to say when you look at the Bible and say, yeah, I know that. I know that. But a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, I read Luke 10, 19. And something just slapped me in my face. I read that scripture and I know that scripture and I memorized that scripture and I know a song about that scripture but when I read that scripture that day it's like the light came on so it's, I have given you Michael you, you have authority to travel on states and scope in your situation to keep with everything that comes to your life you have authority over these things what are you doing why are you languishing why are you lamenting why are you being down why you have authority over the devil and you need to tell other people about it you need to tell everybody about it you have authority there is no such thing there is no such thing 
And you may have heard it, the devil made me do it. Don't no just say the devil made me do it. Don't get me, you do anything. Nothing you don't want to do. Whatever you do that's wrong, you did it because you wanted to do it. Amen. That's the reason. That's what you, you said what you said because you wanted to say it. You went where you went because you wanted to go. Amen. You thought what you thought because you wanted to think that. Whatever you did that was wrong, it happened because you wanted to do it. Amen. No, no, but I'm so weak to the devil. No, the devil didn't make you do it. You did it. Amen. You did it. What the devil does is suggest. Uh -huh. Why don't you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Nobody's around. Amen. Nobody will ever know. Nobody will see. It's just between me and you. I won't tell anybody. And he whispers. And he lies. And we listen. Never get into a conversation with the devil. Eve got into a conversation with the devil. And she wound up sitting against God. You cannot get into a conversation with the devil. He will tear you apart. Speak the word of God. Make him run. Make him flee. Praise God. Confuse his little mind. And he will leave you alone. Amen. 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 Praise God in the midst of your trouble. And make him leave you alone. See, we, 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 we go through things and we're wondering what's happening, what's going on in my life. Begin to give God the praise and you will see and you will know, you will understand that the devil is scratching his little head. What in the world? How can they do it? How can they sing when all these things are going on in their life? That's why sometimes you need to sing. Sometimes you need to shout. Sometimes you need to sing real loud. Sometimes you need to dance. Sometimes you need to do these things because the devil needs to know where you stand. The devil needs to know exactly where you stand. And I don't know what Job did. I don't know if Job sang. I don't know if he shouted. But Job knew these things that we talk about. He knew them. And even before you're able to dance and shout and sing, you need to know. You need to know, I'm going to stand up. I'm not going to go backward no matter what, no matter what. I'm not going to move. I'm going to praise. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise God. What keeps you coming? What keeps you coming? Every week, every week. What makes you come? What makes you come? Because there's something, there's something, there's something happening deep on the inside that you know this is, this is right. You know this is real. You know God is there. No matter what's going on in your life, you still show up because you know that God has the answer to what ails you. God has the answer. No matter what. So stand firm. Trust God. Cherish His Word. And praise God in the midst of all of your trouble. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.